Thanks for joining me today. I am Happy Nappy One, and today I'm just gonna talk simply about what the title says. You know, why did you get rejected? And before we get started, I want to make sure that I'm. I want you to know that I'm not speaking for any organization. Although I am a member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, I am not speaking for Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. I'm just speaking generally across the D9. Any of the black greek letter organizations and this might apply to you this might not apply to why you got rejected but you know what you never know but look at me i'm up here trying to give you some some of this tea so i hope you drink it while it's hot you ingest it and then it produces something even better so with that said we're gonna jump right into this video i know y'all like why is she looking down i'm getting all this makeup off of me i was doing a few makeup videos also i'm a beauty blogger but um yeah so you know one of the biggest reasons why people get rejected is because they have a bad reputation so whether that bad reputation means around the campus or the community you might be deemed as a trouble starter or you might you know have a bad attitude or you might not get along with people really well or you don't know how to settle differences without being violent stuff like that um, people ain't got time for that. Like, what you have to realize is these people are voting on whether they want to let you into the organization. And, you know, these are the people who will potentially be your brothers or sisters. And if they see that, you know, you aren't able to be, um, you can't mesh well with others, that's an issue because you're gonna have to work with each other. And you're joining an organization that's already been, that's been here and it's been thriving for most of the organizations for at least a hundred years. So don't think people aren't looking at you and your character when they're making these choices. So your rep could be a reason why you get passed on. Another reason, um, your GPA. So whether you're grad or undergrad, you gotta have a certain GPA. Like I can't tell you what that GPA is because every organization has different standards. But the point is, if you're struggling in school, um, you might be struggling in life too. So what would be the purpose of them bringing you in when they're like, you barely making it just doing what you're doing now. And if we add on all the stuff that we actually need you to do to help the organization grow, you might bail out on us too. Like we don't need no average folks in here. Like if you barely, you're barely making it, you're barely making the school's GPA requirements. Yeah, that might be a reason why they choose to not pick you. Um, Another thing, so let's say you're undergrad or if you're grad, um, you have no type of associations. You have no ties to the community. You do no service. You do nothing. You just out here. That's a red flag because why you want to start with us? There's a million other organizations out here that you can join. Why do you want to join us? So just know that the members of the chapters are going to be looking at that and they're like, um, they ain't did nothing. Now we supposed to just take their word that they're going to do some work for us. Nah, bruh. Nah, sis hard pass. Um, another reason why you could have gotten passed over, the people in the chapter don't know you. So just know if you decide to come to an event and you showed your face at maybe three of the events and they didn't through maybe 10 events out the whole year, people probably don't know you. If you haven't gotten outside of the event as well as trying to personally know these people, they're not going to want to invite you because they don't know anything about you. They haven't socially hung out with you they haven't personally hung out with you they haven't professionally hung out with you so how are they going to gauge what type of person you might be if they haven't seen different sides of you to know if you're going to mesh well with them and if you are going to and if they are going to mesh well with you you know what i'm saying so you got to understand it goes both ways but if you're not allowing them to get to know you and they're not being able to get to know you they might pass on you another thing um let's say you run into the chapter members and every interaction that you've had with them has not been positive like 
people are like, um, every time I seen her, she looked like she had attitude. Just because somebody looked like they had attitude doesn't mean they do. But if this is something consistent and different people are seeing this, or if you say certain little slick things and other people are hearing it and they're like, you know what? Um, this person seems like a Debbie Downer. And I don't think I'm trying to invite them to be my sister or my brother when all they doing is being negative, you know, ain't got nothing nice to say, always got a stank face, act like they don't want to get to know nobody. I ain't got time for you, boo. So you know what? You ain't going to get voted in either. Now, the last thing I want you to take very seriously, I mean, take all of these seriously, but another reason why you might get um, passed on is because if you have a past, a past, past of being um, untrustworthy, if we can't trust you, more than likely, we're not going to let you in. And people are like, what do you mean trust them? Trust. Trust is really hard because if you're coming into this organization, we need to know that we can trust you. You're going to learn information that only chapter members or organizational members would know. You're going to be, you know, told things or you're going to experience stuff that only you know, members of the organization would experience. And we need to know that you're going to be there and be a guardian of our secrets. We're going to need to know that we can rely on you. You're going to be there. And if you're like a person that's like telling them, oh, I'm going to come to an event, don't show up. Oh, um, I want to know more information. Let me set up an event. I mean, set up a time for us to talk. You flake out and don't call, don't show up. You say, oh, I'm going to support your event. I'm going to donate $20 to your March of Dimes walk, and I don't see the funds. Like, you're, you've are you made a, a paper trail of red flags, and those red flags are going to turn into no votes. So, again, remember, these people are voting on you to come into their organizations. And not just this last thing I talked about. Everything I've talked about could be a reason why you were rejected because... Folks not trying to take chances. Like, I need to feel secure. If I, I feel secure about a candidate, you know, someone who wants to come into my organization, I got a strong yes, and, you know, I'm going to vouch for that person because I feel like they're going to be an asset to the organization versus I don't know about this person. They might, they might not. You know, this day they was cool. That day they was tripping. I ain't nobody got time for that. Be consistent. Be consistent. Be consistent. So with that said, I hope this helps some of you out if you've been rejected and you're like, I have no idea why. Like more than likely they're going to tell you why you were rejected, but you don't always get all the details of why you were rejected. So just know just because you were rejected that first time doesn't mean there isn't another chance for you to join. So maybe they're looking for you to change some of those things that I talked about so they can learn who you are and then redetermine if you're a good fit for their organization and specifically their chapter. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit me up with any questions or comments below. I appreciate all the love I've been getting. Make sure you subscribe to your girl so my channel can keep growing. Thanks a lot and I'll see you guys next time.